So I'm going to record this video. Uh, I might do a follow-up. I'm about to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a follow-up where maybe I'll, I'll give a demonstration of what I'm talking about. Um, but lately, my desktop computer is pretty good about you know avoiding proprietary software. Besides some drivers like for my NVIDIA card, uh, it's pretty much free and open source, or at least free so or at least open source software. Um, but on my phone, still been lacking behind, and um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, there had been up until recently uh, three and a half programs that I've been using uh, that I kind of felt dependent on that were proprietary. Uh, Google Photos, uh, which I, I've kind of replaced already with Sync Thing, and I'm actually in the process of setting up a next cloud server here at my house uh, so that I can automatically push my photos to that. Um, Google Hangouts, which I've actually switched to using KDE Connect, which if you have not heard of, is actually really cool. It synchronizes things with your phone, so at least I can get messages and I can send texts from it. And then I'm using Sync Thing to sync my text-based database, and then I create a terminal application to uh, be able to text people and see the conversation. Um, so, and that was the thing I liked about Hangouts was that I got my text on my computer and I could respond from there. It's a little different because now instead of my server being up in the cloud somewhere, it's my phone. As long as it's on the same network as my my computer, I can share that the conversations. But uh, on the half is um, I, I didn't even think about it until I was uh, uh, getting rid of the proprietary software uh, and I was moving a bunch of stuff. Is uh, you kind of as far as I know, uh, and the reason I'm doing this video is because I'm looking for help. If I didn't say that at the beginning, um, voice typing. Is there a way on Android to have open source iTalk and it types? Even if it's using Google services in the cloud, I don't care. I don't care about using services. What people run on their servers, I don't mind. Uh, but I'm looking for a free and or open source program uh, for my phone, even if it's taking my voice and sending it to Google. I, I'm not concerned about the privacy part. I just want the free software on my phone, if that makes any sense. I am playing around with things like, um, was it Deep? Deep Voice? Is it Deep Voice from Mozilla? Which I got running on my desktop, which works great. I can talk and it types. It's just really slow. And then I'd have to write something on my phone that takes my voice and sends it to my desktop or server somewhere and then responds, just like Google does, but running my own server. Uh, it's, I'm working on that. But if you guys know anything, let me know. But the last thing is Google Maps. So I've been playing around with uh, OSM A&D, uh, Osma. I don't know if there's a way you say that. It's Open Street Maps for Android. And it's a really neat program, and it has a lot of really cool features, and it uses OpenStreetMaps as the database. But here's the issue. I type in almost any address, after downloading all the maps for Florida, I type in almost any address in my town, and none of them come up. Now, if I go to the OpenStreetMaps website, I can type in most of these addresses, and most of them come up. So I don't understand why this isn't. Now, if I get the GPS location, it will put me right there and give me directions and stuff. Um, which I actually have started writing a shell script that I can type in an address. It pulls the GPS location from OpenStreetMaps, and then I can, then it sends it to uh, the uh, OpenStreetMaps application, and now I can guide my way there. Um, or I can manually start entering all these addresses into Google Street Maps. But like I said, a lot of them are already on, or sorry, OpenStreetMaps. So that's the, the the worst part right now is. I can't just type in an address for most of the addresses where I live. Again, even though they're on the OpenStreetMap website, I can type them and get them. That doesn't make sense to me. So I, maybe I'm using it wrong, uh, but I don't think so because there are some addresses, especially the businesses that I can find. But if I try to put in a house address, even if I can find it on the website, I can't find it in the application. And that's the big thing. It's like, for most things, I'd be like, okay, this is fine. I wrote a little script, pulls the GPS, gives me that, or I give the address, it gives me the GPS, I put that into the application, whatever. The thing is, maps are something you use a lot of time while you're driving, and you can't be fiddling with your phone while you're driving. So, yeah, even though this might be a slight inconvenience in most cases, and just takes one extra step, but works, I can't have that extra step, and I can't be fuddling, and then hoping that it actually gave me the right location while I'm driving. Uh, you know, and I can preload, if I'm on a trip, preload all the address, but if I go, oh, I need to find this real quick, I can't just, you know, enter it and, and say add to route, because it, it just won't work. Um, and again, uh, I'll probably do a video demonstrating this so you guys see what I'm talking about. So either I'm doing something really wrong, or for some reason this program just doesn't do that. Um, it, you know, it has a section where you can type in an address, but it doesn't bring up 
you know, I'll type in an address and it will be like, do you mean this? And it's like an address like either another town or not even close to what I'm typing in. Uh, so if you guys have any suggestions, I would appreciate that. Because uh, once I got rid of, get rid of that, um, once I get rid of that, it's just kind of like the voice to typing, which technically I could live without. Uh, although, like I said, I could try setting up my own server, although even with my desktop, although uh, I'm using the deep voice thing. Again, I think that's what it's called. Uh, and it takes a couple of seconds for it to translate the voice. And I've only done a little test with it. But there's also a version that supposedly will use your GPU. I tried installing that real quick and it gave me errors. Um, but it may have been because I already had the other version installed because the other version stopped working once I installed that. And once I installed that, the first version stopped working. So maybe you can't have them both installed at the same time or whatever. And I should do videos on that because I played around with that. And I finally got Sphinx, Pocket Sphinx working a little bit. Uh, I have to get some better voice models because it does a horrible job at translating. Uh, but if I make just a list of words and say this, these are the list of words that I might be saying, it does a better job. Anyway, I'm going to be doing videos on all that when I have a chance. They're a little more in-depth than just sitting in front of the camera like this. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys have any suggestions to getting OpenStreetMaps on Android working better for, for address locations, great. I'll also try to do a video showing you entering an address and pulling a GPS, which works great as long as OpenStreetMaps has the right ad, uh, GPS for that address or even has that address in there, which lots of times it doesn't, but it, it works fairly well. Although I still haven't, it has navigation, I still haven't really used it for navigation yet. I can't judge even how well that works. Uh, but once I can replace that, and what I might end up doing is just removing uh, Google Maps from my main phone and having a backup phone, because I have extra phones, older phones laying around, uh, and use that, because I'll usually do that when I go on vacation anyway. I use a secondary phone for my, uh, I just, you know, do the offline maps with Google Maps, and I'll drive with that. That way I save the battery on my main phone. Uh, of course, I don't have any uh, internet on that phone, so it doesn't give me traffic updates, but I won't be getting that with open street maps, uh, I don't think. Um, so, if I can't get open street maps working, and I really want to make this push, I might uh, end up just having a second phone because I do have these play phones and, and sometimes I'll have them for installing proprietary software just to test things out like, oh, this company, I've done this before, uh, this company will give you discounts at their store if you install their app and, and I'll, so I'll install their app either in a virtual machine or on one of these extra things and lots of times they'll give you a QR code, I want to say lots of times, I've had times where they give you a, like, this is your number or your QR code or a barcode for you to scan and I just reproduce that and then I can remove the app and I can do that. I, I've done that uh, a few times. So I'll install the app on a phone, get the information I need, and then uninstall the app. But I don't do that with my main phone. I use the spare phones for that. Anyway, what do you guys do in situations like that? Uh, it's like, I, I don't want to use these apps, but hey, they're offering a free whatever. Um, you know, and I'll use my junk mail email. So they don't really have any of my information. How do you feel about that? I don't know. Anyway. I do thank you for watching, listening to me talk. And again, this video is just kind of asking you guys, what do you think? What do you do? Do you have any suggestions, especially with the uh, OpenStreetMaps thing? Have you used it? Have you got it working? As far as the app on the phone, uh, which I downloaded from F-Droid. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to any suggestions. Have a great day.